Hi everyone, welcome to Automotive Diagnosis YouTube channel. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, ignition coil packs uh, and we're going to see how uh, this ignition coil works and we're going to see how we can check it out. So because uh, normally we, uh, we have different types of uh, ignition coils. Uh, so this is, this is what we call it coil pack or a waste spark okay and we will see why we call it a uh, waste spark so in this video i'm going to talk about the wine diagram i will explain the wine diagram how this ignition coil works how you can test the primary uh, coil and how you can test the uh, secondary coil okay let's start uh, first of all uh, this is the location of uh, the ignition coil uh, on the engine as you see, uh, ignition coil are connected to the spark plugs using these high tension cables. So here is the ignition coil pack one, and here we have ignition coil pack two. So ignition coil pack one, as you see, uh, it's connected to two high tension cables for providing the high voltage to uh, cylinder number one and four. And uh, coil pack two, as you see, the numbers are written on that one too. Uh, it's providing the high voltage this time for cylinder number two and uh, three. So it means whenever this ignition coil is working, each pack is going to provide the spark at the same time for two cylinders. That's why we call it waste spark. So it means when coil pack number one and four is uh, providing the high voltage for the spark plugs, we will have this spark for both spark plugs. So it means the spark plugs in cylinder number one and number four, they are sparking at the same time. They are creating the spark at the same time. So uh, obviously one cylinder right now is gonna be at the end of the compression. So that spark is gonna be useful, but the other one is gonna be at the end of uh, exhaust. So obviously that spark is not going to work that's why we call it waste spark because one spark is going to work the other one is not going to do anything for us so this is the wiring diagram for uh, ignition coil pack uh, as you see this is the ignition coil one or ignition coil pack one which is going to provide the high voltage for cylinder one and four and this is the ignition coil pack two which is going to uh, provide the high voltage for cylinder number two and three and this one at the bottom this is the uh, ECU so ECU is going to control the ground for each uh, each coil pack so what we have inside each coil pack what you have here is primary winding or primary coil so one end of the primary coil is connected to the ECU and the other end is connected to the power which is coming from the main relay. So as soon as you, uh, so as soon as you turn the ignition switch on, or when when engine is running, main relay is connected. So you will you will have the power right here and there, which is going to be the battery voltage. And the other end is connected to the ECU, and ECU is going to control this ground whenever uh, it's the proper time for uh, providing the high, high voltage for one cylinder. And the second part here is actually the secondary winding. Secondary winding is connected to these two output, which are, for example, here. So these are exactly the output uh, to the spark plugs. So you have your high tension cables connected to there. So when this ignition coil is working, what happens? Just imagine engine is running. Okay, so this is ignition coil one which is going to be uh, this part on your uh, ignition coil pack, which is going to control cylinder number one and four. And this is ignition coil pack number two, which is uh, for cylinder number two and three. Uh, it's going to be, uh, which is going to be this section on the ignition coil pack itself. But how these ignition coils uh, work let's have a look so when engine is running the first thing which is going to happen 
is obviously your main relay is uh, energized. So power from the main relay is going to travel all the way to ignition coil. All right. So your ignition coil uh, has received the power right now. And when it's time for providing the spark, for example, to cell number one or four, ECM is going to provide uh, beforehand, ECM is going to connect this ground. So to energize the primary uh, winding. So primary winding is going to create a magnetic field, right? And right at the time that the spark is required, ECM is going to cut this ground. So this magnetic field inside the ignition coil is going to collapse and it's going to induce the high voltage into the secondary winding. And secondary winding obviously is going to increase the voltage and then it will provide the high voltage to spark plugs. And as you see, two spark plugs uh, will provide the spark at the same time. And as I said earlier, only one of them is going to be used because, well, for example, at this case, if cylinder number one is at the end of the compression, this uh, spark is going to be useful. But number four, cylinder number four is going to be at the end of the exhaust. So the spark is going to uh, get wasted. Okay, same as 34 uh, ignition coil number two. This is how generally it works, but let's see how we can uh, get it tested. For primary coil uh, internal resistance, so it's obviously is uh, more than easy because I just explained it. Uh, this is your primary coil in here for ignition coil pack one, and this is for ignition coil pack two. So we know that one end is connected to the uh, power side and the other one is connected to the ground side or control line. So as you see here, we have pin number one, pin number two, and pin number three. We have three pins, right? So if you check between pin number three and pin number one of ignition coil connector, you're actually checking the uh, internal resistance of primary uh, primary winding of ignition coil pack number one on this one. All right, let's see how we can uh, check it out. So we are checking uh, between pin number one and pin number three. So you're going to read the primary uh, winding internal resistance and normally this value should be something around one or, or less but right now if you check between pin number three and pin number two you are actually checking the primary coil for coil pack number two okay it's really important to know uh, what you are doing and for the secondary coil uh, you see these two outputs right here okay uh, if you check uh, if you check the resistance between these two outputs, you are actually checking the uh, secondary winding uh, internal resistance. Okay, so if you check between these two, you are checking the uh, secondary internal resistance for coil pack number two, and for coil pack number one, you need to check between these two outputs. All right, uh, super easy. You just need to find. Uh, the location and you need to make sure uh, which one of the coil packs you are checking. It's going to be exactly like this. You need to check the internal resistance and the value is going to be between 12 to 15 kilo ohms in general, but it's really important to check the workshop manual for your specific car as well. So let's see how we can uh, measure these two resistance on a real uh, ignition coil. So this is the ignition coil. This coil pack is for number two and three, and this one for number four and one. So I have the connector right here. As you see, I have three pins. Uh, so it's really easy for uh, checking the uh, primary winding internal resistance. I set the multimeter on resistance. And as you remember, if I check the resistance between pin number one and three, I'm going to read the primary winding internal resistance for coil pack number one, which obviously was supposed to be around one or more less. So what I'm measuring right now is one or, which is pretty much okay. It's going to be one or less. And if I go between one, 
if I go between pin number three and two, uh, it's going to be again uh, one of my list, which is for uh, uh, primary winding of uh, uh, ignition coil number two. And for checking the secondary, I need to check between these two ends. Uh, same for each coil pack. So I use these uh, props just to make it easier for reaching to uh, to the end because my multimeter props doesn't doesn't reach to the point that I need to have the proper contact for measuring the resistance. So right now, uh, as you see, uh, the value should be around 12 kilo ohm or a bit higher. So it's something as uh, if I keep it steady. So it's reading something around 12 kilo ohms or a bit less than that, which is still okay. Uh, and for the second coil pack, it's gonna be still around 12 kilo ohms, which is uh, close uh, to the uh, specification in the workshop manual, which shows uh, that my ignition coil is okay. Here is another type of ignition coil packs. Uh, as you see, they are pretty much similar to coil on plugs, but you see the high tension cables and another output. Uh, it shows that uh, this ignition coil is gonna provide the voltage uh, for two cylinders at any one time. So one output of this ignition coil, exactly like the coil on plug is gonna sit on the spark plug. But the other output that you see right here, uh, this one is gonna go to another cylinder using a high tension cable. So let's see uh, what is uh, the situation for this ignition coil. So this is the ignition coil and you see the wind diagram right here. Uh, so uh, this engine was a V6 engine, uh, but uh, we, only we only had three ignition coil because each ignition coil is gonna provide the high voltage for two cylinders. So I have this one. Uh, this ignition coil is going to provide the high voltage for cylinder number one and four. Okay. The next ignition coil will provide the high voltage for number five and two. And the last one for number three and six. All right. So this is how we can set up the uh, high tension cables as well. Because normally you see the, uh, you see the, uh, ignition coils uh, uh, at the front, but the high high tension cables are going to go to the ad, to the other bank to provide the volt high voltage to the other cylinders. Okay, this is the ignition coil. As you see, it's for the Toyota. I removed it from that engine. I'm going to show you how to uh, check the internal resistance of the primary uh, winding right now. I'm just using this pins and the wires to make it easier for having the proper contact. And my multimeter is set on resistance. So I can, uh, now I just connect it to the multimeter props to inspect the uh, resistance. Again, it's gonna be something like one or more less. As you see, I'm reading around one ohm for primary winding of this ignition coil, which is uh, okay. So. Uh, there is nothing wrong with the primary coil on uh, this ignition coil. And for the secondary one, I need to insert one end of the uh, one prop of the multimeter uh, uh, on that end and the other one to the output to the high tension cable. All right. At the, and again, our specification is 12 kilo ohms uh, and uh, between 12 to 15 kilo ohms. As you see, this value is from, is exactly okay. So as you see, these two ignition cores were a bit different in shape, but the, the procedure for measuring the primary winding or uh, secondary uh, winding internal resistance was exactly uh, similar. The only difference was a little in shape. So you shouldn't be confused because uh, the second ignition coil that we tested was pretty much similar, pretty much uh, similar to the coil on plug but uh, the clue that you have is exactly the high tension cables that were connected between one coil and a spark plug in the other bank all right 
uh, thank you very much everyone for watching this video if you want to uh, if you want to know how to inspect other ignition coils like the coil on plugs with two pins coil on plug with three pins or four pins you can find the link in the description because there is another video in the channel describing all other all different types of ignition coils and how to test them thank you very much